If you keep walking and worshiping the Holy Ghost, there will come a time when riches will come knocking at your door. They can't not. Holy Ghost, your God. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today, and you walk with Him by saying words. My name is Andrew Hemstrad, and thank you for joining us. If this is your first time here, make sure that you subscribe. If this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you, then consider becoming a partner with us. Well, tonight I want to talk about the Holy Ghost and His place in the universe. Say, in the universe. Because you know, he is God, he is Almighty God, and he has a place in the universe and your place in the universe. Now, think about it you're somewhere in the universe, he's somewhere in the universe. Where is his place? Almighty God, where is his place? And then we're gonna find out tonight that his place is actually in you, and this is good news. So, who is he? The Holy Ghost many people don't know him as God don't know him as a person and what I'm gonna talk about tonight they don't know him as a God of wealth say a God of wealth they don't want to know him that way their religious upbringing and thinking keeps them from knowing him the Holy Ghost Almighty God his place in the universe as a God of wealth how could you not know Almighty God as a God of wealth? He literally created everything and owns everything. That's pretty wealthy if you ask me. In fact, if you bring this up to most people, they'll just quickly shut you right off because they don't want to hear anything about it. Wealth is a huge part of who he is. Say a huge part of who he is. Consider heaven for a second. What do you think heaven is like we have some records in here of what heaven is like and while we all kind of know this streets made out of gold and not just regular gold we're talking gold that is so pure that it's transparent you can see through it transparent gold we don't even know anything about that here on earth and yet it is the thing that they walk on meaning that's the base so even at the lowest level of wealth that God has in his place is way beyond what we can ask or think even here right God's place in the universe is he lives in wealth he's a God of wealth wealth that's far beyond where we are how about Solomon's temple think about that the Queen of Sheba came and visited Solomon and when she saw the temple and the way things were run there it said her breath was taken away and she wasn't just some plebeian or some peasant this was the queen she brought large amounts of gold and a bunch of other things gifts for Solomon and when she saw him her breath was taken away wealth is a big part of who the Holy Ghost is it's kind of what he is it's what he does it's 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 how he lives does this make sense what if we can know him better him the Holy Ghost what if we can know him better if we do know him better then his stuff rubs off on us the way he thinks rubs off on us the way he lives rubs off on us his wealth say his wealth rubs off on us let it rub off on you even tonight say I'm going to let it rub off on me so needless to say although I'm gonna say it he the Holy Ghost believes in wealth can you can you give me that I know the subject is irritating to a lot of people but it shouldn't be he the Holy Ghost if you're gonna know him it's something he believes in the Holy Ghost believes in wealth abundant supernatural wealth third John verse 2 beloved I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health I have a little number two next to the word wish 
and it says pray in the margin of my Bible so here he's praying he's wishing meaning this is his will say his will that they would prosper and be in health above all things so firstly you have to understand this that it is God's will above all things say above all things that you prosper and be in health this is something he does provision is something he does say that provision is something he does and he does it for those who believe in him now if you don't believe that he is someone who does provision then you're gonna have a problem believing for provision or if you don't believe that he believes in wealth or lives in wealth then you're gonna have issues that's why I started it this way God believes in wealth if God believes in wealth shouldn't you believe in wealth Deuteronomy 818 we won't turn there because we have a lot of other things to turn to says it is God who gives thee power to get wealth if he's going to give you power to get wealth he must have power to get wealth to give you say he has power to get wealth wouldn't that make him wealthy if at any time he had power it's nothing for him power to get wealth say power to get wealth sometimes you got to make the motions if let's pray first Holy Ghost to worship you I thank you that you are God in the earth today and you're ministering to people right now changing the way they think changing the way they behave causing them to understand you and know how to walk in a new and living way with you in the earth the living God we worship you in Jesus name amen Haggai chapter 2 and we'll, let's look at uh, verse 5 according to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt so my spirit remains among you fear ye not so he's gonna tell you about some things that happens when his spirit remains among you what day are we in today we're in the day of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost dispensation if there's any day when the spirit is remaining among us in us and among us it would be our day okay so my spirit remains among you fear you not verse 6 for thus says the Lord of hosts yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory says the Lord of hosts then he uh, specifically tells you what that glory is going to be lest you with your religious mind try to think that it's something else because many times glory in the Bible is specifically talking about wealth and so he says I will fill this house with glory verse 8 the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts so whose is it who's the silver and the gold belong to he just said it's his the glory of this latter house that he was just talking about shall be greater than of the former says the Lord of hosts and in this place say this place will I give peace or prosperity that's translated in other places so in that place where he's abiding he's going to give prosperity the glory in that place is going to be greater than in the former house now the former house we know he's talking about Solomon's temple was Solomon's temple a temple of wealth it was ridiculously wealthy and expensive well he's saying that this latter house is going to be greater than the former house is this making sense and in that place he will give prosperity say in that place he will give prosperity we're talking about God's place and your place and his place in the universe his place is in you I hope you can see where we're going with this we're talking about God's wealth 
it's not your wealth a lot of people go well yeah well i i don't need any what we're not talking about your wealth we're talking about his wealth even philippians 4 19 my god shall supply all your need according to his riches well i don't need some i don't need very much i just need enough to get by that's not enough enough to get by is not enough because he doesn't live on enough to get by it's not about you say it's not about me it's about him it's his wealth he supplies my needs according to his riches why do you suppose that is we'll, we'll get into that in a minute because he's living in you he's accustomed to a certain manner of life and as we get walking with him he's going to cause us to get closer and closer to that manner of life is this making sense it's his wealth not yours you're not being greedy you are being accepting of him the living god the god of wealth who lives in you first chronicles 29 verse 1 this is back when they were building the temple furthermore david the king said unto all the congregation solomon my son whom alone god has chosen is yet young and tender and the work is great for the palace is not for man but for the lord god people are saying well you you to spend too much money on that palace it's not about the guy it's not about you it's about the god that's going to be in it so it's not about you it's about the god who is in you because you are the temple of god and if he's a believer in wealth what should that make you if you're going to be a responsible accurate temple of him you'll get wealthier say i'll get wealthier so the work is great for the palace is not for man but for the lord so are you being greedy by believing for wealth no you're being scriptural we're talking about being the temple of the lord is there any benefit to being the temple of the lord what happens to the temple of the lord it gets clothed in the glory that the lord bestows upon it you have to see beyond your religious conception thinking that the glory is just somehow some kind of sad peace it's actual that's why he corrected you remember in haggai he said the glory of this latter house the silver and the gold glory to god forever first timothy chapter six is there any benefit in being a temple of god or a temple of the living god let's just see here first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches say uncertain riches what do you suppose uncertain riches are worldly riches that you could possibly trust in that might work might not work we all understand this right trust not in the uncertain riches but in see he's comparing them uncertain riches economy those kind of things don't trust in that but trust in the living god which means he's equating the living god to being a better economy or a stronger place for riches to be trust not in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy so here you had somebody trusting in uncertain riches and then he's saying no don't do that trust in the living god who gives us richly are you seeing this so he's got this whole other way of doing things that is not uncertain it's certain say it's certain certain riches are you telling me that if i follow the living god and trust in the living god 
there would be certain riches yes I'm saying certainly it's certain it's not questionable it's it's a matter of time frankly if you keep walking and worshiping the Holy Ghost there will come a time when riches will come knocking at your door they can't not are you here because you're the temple of the living God and they're drawn if you went back and I, I've done so much study on this it's almost ridiculous but Solomon literally he, uh, silver became as nothing they would they would have these silver heaps outside they would only count the gold there was too much silver but as you can see it would just come from everywhere it was like it was attracted to him was it attracted to Solomon no it was attracted to God who was in the temple say it was attracted to God who was in the temple what God were we talking about we're talking about the Holy Ghost and if you worship him in your temple it will attract wealth to you are you getting this it's coming to you now say wealth is attracted to me because the Holy Ghost is in me you think the Holy Ghost can live in poverty he can't he changes whatever he's in to what he is so anyway is there any benefit to being a temple of God I think we can see that that the living God richly provides me with all things for my enjoyment why would he provide me with all things for my enjoyment because he's in me he's in you he's providing you with that for your enjoyment because he gets enjoyment out of it verse 17 again charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy so who is the living God who's the living God we know the Holy Ghost everybody's been around here but some sometimes people just completely miss this let's see quickly go to let's go to 2nd Corinthians people that have been around here a lot I'll ask a question they immediately just say Holy Ghost I'll ask a question Holy Ghost I'm not even paying attention they're just looking off somewhere else they'll just say Holy Ghost because we're talking about the Holy Ghost yeah <laughs> so who is the Living God it said to trust in the Living God who gives us richly so we want to know specifically who the Living God is so we can trust in him and we will know that he's the one who's giving us richly say richly second Corinthians did you find it chapter 6 and verse 16 and what agreement has the temple of God with idols for you are the temple of the Living God who's the temple of the Living God use the temple of the Living God say I'm the temple of the Living God right and he said that we should uh, the Living God was the one who richly provides us with all things say the Living God richly provides me with all things and here it says you're the temple of the Living God so that would be the Living God that's in you is going to richly provide you with all things are you getting this if he couldn't do that then why would it even say that first Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you so who's the Living God he said you're the temple of the Living God and then he said what no you're not that you're the temple of God that the Spirit of God dwells in you who's the Living God according scripturally who is the Living God would be the Holy Ghost who dwells in you whose temple you are so we can see here that the Living God has power to give us richly all things to enjoy it's something he does say it's something he does and he's good at it if you'd let him first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you 
and you are not your own for you are bought with a price therefore glorify God in your body you're not your own you're not just your own you're his therefore I'm going to glorify God in my body oh I don't like riches I don't like wealth glorify him in your body it's not about you it's about him are you here glorify God in your body what do we say glory talked about Haggai glorify God riches it's part of who he is sometimes you, you just have to make your mind focus on something wealth is part of the lifestyle God lives heaven if he didn't want to live that way heaven would be like dirt roads and ramble shacks and cardboard boxes so who is the God that's in the temple who's the temple we, we just went through that who's the temple? you're the temple who is the God that's in the temple his name is the Holy Ghost right is he in you'd wonder sometimes with people you know have you ever heard this is the doctor in they put a little sign up on the door is the doctor in yes the doctor is in is the Holy Ghost in is the teacher in is the leader in is the helper in in where in you if he is in you he's teaching you he's leading you he's helping you to number one what do we say I would above all things above all things that you'd prosper it's the first thing if the teachers in he's helping you to prosper he's teaching you to prosper he's leading you to prosper Isaiah chapter 48 let's look at verse 17 thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer the Holy One of Israel the Holy One in our day Holy Ghost right he's the one in the earth I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee who's the Lord our God in our day that teaches us John 14 26 says when he is come he shall teach you all things well he has come he's going to teach us all things he is the teacher I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee to what to profit and leads thee by the way that thou shouldest go Romans 8 14 says the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God the Spirit of God is the Holy Ghost we're led by the Holy Ghost we're taught by the Holy Ghost I am the Lord thy God which teaches thee to profit which leads thee by the way that you should go if he's teaching you if he's leading you it is into prosperity and wealth why because that's who he is and if you're gonna walk with him you're gonna be walking in greater and greater and greater and greater and greater degrees of prosperity from glory to glory to glory to glory until the earth can't hold it anymore are you here so we know now obviously who we're talking about I am the Lord thy God which the, the Holy One teaches thee and leads thee the teacher and leader in our day is the Holy Ghost we know who we're talking about and the first thing he's going to teach you above all things is to prosper and be in health you can like it or not I say choose to like it say the Holy Ghost teaches me above all things to profit the Holy Ghost teaches me to profit and leads me in the way that I should go is this any good he's the helper what's he helping you in my prosperity what's he leading you in more prosperity yeah but, but 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 I have enough I have enough prosperity well he doesn't he needs more okay it's not about you it's not about what you like it's about what he likes it's about what he wants to live in you think he wants to live in a sick body <laughs> prosper and be in health are you here 
<sighs> don't ever be ashamed of the wealth that God is bringing to you don't ever be ashamed of the wealth that he's causing you to walk in and live in it's a representation of him his personality acknowledge the God that is in you let me say that again acknowledge the God that is in who's the God that's in you the Holy Ghost and acknowledge the fact that wealth is a important component of how he expresses himself don't ever be ashamed of it you are his temple he's going to express himself through you so allow him to do it learn how to cooperate remember he's teaching you learn how to cooperate with him if you learn how to cooperate with him you're going to learn how to cooperate in greater and greater and greater degrees of glory and wealth does this make sense learn how to cooperate with this transformation of you you're being transformed into a wealthy person you will think differently speak differently well you speak differently first but then you'll think differently and then you'll act differently and all of those things are a manifestation of him coming forth and then you can say it has changed me into a rich person what do you suppose is changing you into a wealthy person the God that is in you by walking closer and closer with him it's inside first that's how he comes into the inside first and then he begins to express himself outwardly Psalms 118 verse 5 I called upon the Lord in distress the Lord answered me and set me in a large place the Lord is on my side I will not fear verse 5 again I called upon the Lord we know who we're talking about we're talking about the Holy Ghost I called upon the Lord in distress this this word in distress is quite curious distress means in a in a tight place constrained under pressure so I called unto the Lord I was in a tight place I was constrained I was under pressure the Lord answered me and set me in a large place a place with room to grow a place a wealthy place who did it who set you in that wealthy place the Lord the one who's in the temple who did it he did it say he did it he prospered me he prospered you you can look back on it and say it was God who did it God who prospered you how did he do it I called upon now if you didn't call upon the Lord to know who the Lord was that's why we're talking about these things you can know and call upon the Holy Ghost and know that he is someone who does this right more tonight than maybe you ever have before I called upon the Lord and he the Lord who does this answered me and set me in a large place Psalms 35 and then let's look at verse 27 let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause yea let them say continually say say continually what do you suppose say continually means to speak something all the time say speak something all the time let them say continually let the Lord be magnified which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant this says God takes pleasure in prospering you because you are serving him by saying continually let the Lord be magnified it sounds very much like you were bought with a price therefore magnify God in your body glorify God in your body you're the temple you are supposed to be magnifying God how do you do it let them say continually let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of me that sounds selfish 
it is not selfish the Lord has pleasure in prospering me because he has pleasure in prosperity it's part of who he is it's part of what he does it's not about you it's about him it's never about you it's always about him let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in prospering me his servant how do you suppose the number one thing that a, that a temple of God should be serving God is by saying what he says when I'm saying his word and his will I'm serving him I'm his saying servant and he has pleasure in prospering his saying servant and that's me let's look at some of the mechanics of this how this could actually happen and come to pass in your life Proverbs 10 22 the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it first of all is this in the Bible is it a promise yeah so the blessing of the Lord it makes rich well what is a blessing a blessing we look at it scripturally is saying something over someone you bless them by saying say I bless them by saying so the blessing of the Lord would be him having said something the blessing of the Lord the saying over of the Lord it makes rich well first of all if that's true then there must be something in the saying that would make the person rich there must be riches in the saying say there's riches in the saying the blessing of the Lord or the saying of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it see now the wonderful thing about words is they can go out beyond where you are listen your words can go out beyond where you are financially I can say things that go out beyond and make things happen beyond what I can actually do does this make sense that is wealth that's how wealth begins to do things and come to you it goes beyond you and where you are the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it so you can say no to sorrow you say no to sorrow you say yes to made rich made rich no sorrow say established and set in a large place I call myself established and set in my wealthy place now I carry this blessing Proverbs 10 22 the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it and then Genesis 12 3 says those who bless you are blessed those who bless me that blessing comes on them and makes them rich and adds no sorrow to them he goes on to say there that all the families of the earth shall be blessed one way that all the families of the earth are blessed is by you spending if you spend something and I don't know if you know this or not people get mad at wealthy people but if you take a wealthy person out of the mix they're not spending anything then all of those other jobs all of those other people that got blessed by that person spending are you here then they're not being blessed one way that all the families of the earth will be blessed is by you spending don't be afraid to spend it's part of the blessing you're not you're blessed by spending those things but there's also a blessing that comes on other people when you spend it this is for somebody I hope that you're hearing this don't be afraid to spend the whole earth will be blessed by you well that's a lot of spending so we're beginning to know God as a God of wealth knowing him being changed by him and into his image as he lives in us means you become a person of wealth say I become a person of wealth 
and it's not about you it's about being changed into his image I hope I got that over to you hallelujah 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 let's look at verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord the veil shall be taken away the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is that spirit right and where the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord I've been talking about it tonight he is a God of wealth and as we behold him listen as we behold him as a God of wealth we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord by beholding him by being changed into what he is glory to glory we are the latter-day temple of the Spirit of the Lord if the former temple was a temple of wealth what would the latter temple be but a temple of wealth greater let me pray for you Holy Ghost I thank you that these people are blessed I ask you to teach them and lead them to be an accurate representation of you in the earth we thank you for it in Jesus name amen if you have a tithe or an offering just hold it in your hands and say this after me Holy Ghost to worship you I thank you that I am blessed and I am blessed to be able to be partaker with you in this day when these revelations are coming forth I shall be a temple of wealth and you shall be glorified in my day in Jesus name amen the father is in heaven Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth